Welcome, welcome to the Thursday evening edition of the Arizona Real Estate News with Pat, what's my right, McMasters, <laughs> yeah. and the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. How is everybody today? Good, yeah. Catholic. Getting there. Getting it's, there. Uh, now, now, Pat's got a cold, so we're going to give you a heads up. So Yeah, he's, my uh, voice sounds um, different. <laughs> yeah, he has, we call it uh, COVID-59. Um, so, yeah. So it's just, <laughs> We're keeping track of the variants out there and there, but he does not have COVID. He, but the thing that's interesting is you told us that you were talking to somebody on a phone and she had a really bad cold. And the next day you got the cold. Yeah. Within, I mean, I started getting, I started feeling like crap about 15, 20 minutes after I talked to her on the phone. Well, so that tells so me crazy. that, that, you know, you may have a crappy internet connection at your house, but your phone connection is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, really. No kidding. So, so we're going to go over some numbers, but I wanted to remind everybody because we're in October now, so we are in fall. So it's time for us once again to reintroduce our pumpkin spiced purchase contract. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we do this time of year? What? So, good one, Rick. I'm lost. <laughs> it smells like pumpkin spice. Yeah, yeah. It's pump, I'm spice. so lost. Now, Which would be very nice. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it to you later on, Jackie. Okay? Yeah, we'll have a little okay. private call. It's okay. So, you know, Ruby, drive over to her house or something. So, uh, so you understand it, Ruby? But <laughs> I got it right away. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right don't dig a hole, Jackie. Well, um, I, I'm so, so lost. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the new contract, though, from October 1st. I don't know if you guys heard, but they added language in here for the inspection period. You know how agents will send you the buyer's inspection report and it says must be repaired by a licensed contractor. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not supposed to do that. If you're going to request a licensed contractor, it has to be addressed first in the original purchase contract. You can't use the buyer inspection form to amend the purchase contract. You can do it with an addendum. Plus the Arizona rules state that it just has to be repaired in a workmanlike manner. But if the individual repair is over $1,000, then you must use a licensed contractor. But because it was so confusing, they put language in the new contract that addresses it, and they put different verbiage in the inspection report. So if you don't have the new purchase contract that came out on the first, uh, you'll need to update your files and grab that. So that's a little inside industry stuff going on. And, and I'm in the middle of that because the, you know, the agent that I'm working with, she's all steamed because... We didn't hire a, a contract. She goes, well, we had it in a contract. I go, no, you, you put it in the bins or you have to have it in the purchase contract. And, you know, I, for crying out loud, he remodeled the entire place. You don't think he could fix a toilet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what's going on. So let's take a look at the numbers uh, this week and see what's happening. And um, we have 20,700 listings on the market today, but it's, there's kind of some weird stuff going on. Not really weird, but, you know, these are new listings that are coming on board have been dropping steadily since July. This blue line here. Then we have this spike up. That spike up is back on market about 300 homes more than usual. It's just weird over the past, this past weekend. That's what drove that number up. And I, I can only speculate about what back on market is. It might be, um, I see a lot of <clears throat> fallout dates, maybe, never got through the inspection period or they can't get the financing, but whatever reason, but sales are continuing to go down. So we're down to uh, 2,472 and we were right after Labor Day at about 2,698. So what's happening is even though the new listings coming on continue to be slower and slower, except for this little blip here, we're just not, putting them under contract that that number is getting lower and lower every time. And uh, so we want to take a look at a couple of the reasons why. And one of them is this, that Pat could tell you all too well, mortgage applications fall the lowest pace in 25 years as interest rates near 77%, not 70 yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spook That's buyers. That's next week. Yeah. Yeah. And I pushed back on that term spook spooked buyers yesterday because they're not spooked. They're just, they, they had a set payment for a certain house price that now they can't live with is they're not spooked. They just like, I had a budget, had a house in mind. 
and my payment went up 40 percent so yeah. that's it's uh you know tell it like it is that's what's going on and but look what it did to the contract ratio see this little balanced market line down here that's white we're way below that now we had a contract contract ratio of 36.6 wow on october 22nd so it's or october 22 not the 22nd but it dropped from 44 to 36.6 rather quickly. So, you know, that again ties into that other chart that I just showed you that says, you know, the listings are coming on at the same rate, if not slower, but nobody's, nobody's picking them up, but there are still some price points out there that are doing quite well. You price a house around the 300 to 400,000 range, you get showing after showing. Um, it's the 500 to 800 that's, that's feeling the pinch. And uh, Pat, um, I'll see if your voice holds out here. If not, uh, I'm going to resort to a porky pig. And All right. uh, just, uh, the rates are beat, but they're bad. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, rates. Uh, today, I'm being basically we've been um, we've been the bond market's been about up down about 35, 40 basis points. It's kind of been getting anticipation of the of the uh, jobs coming out tomorrow. You know, they're expecting about two hundred fifty thousand. Um, you know, obviously, you see here, um, based on where we're at, we had this little staircase climb. These are rates. You know, this this is the tenure treasury step step all the way. Now we saw resistance. Four has been kind of a um, you know right now we're at three point eight two on the ten year. Can I hopefully my voice sounds halfway decent? Yeah, it's you're fine. doing good. You're fine. Um, we'll so keep I mean, you on the you know, payroll. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, I just about passed out there. <laughs> um, Ruby will take over. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, you know, it's you, you're seeing this as I can if I can blow this up a little bit. You know, you're seeing this. Obviously, there's some bouncing around now. There's some volatility. What what's going on? You know, with um, the market. I mean, we we might we've got some room to the downside. Obviously, rates could fall. Obviously, we they do get a disappointment. Um, but you know, we're now we're starting this. You know, we had the staircase climb, and this is kind of what I was waiting. This part I was waiting around in here where you see this, but this staircase climb has just been brutal up. And uh, now we're starting to see some jockeying now with the, jo the, the jobs. The lenders are skittish right now. I mean, the bonds, if they improve, lenders are slow to improve rates, uh, especially on the retail side. On the wholesale side, I've got more flexibility because lenders will improve their rates quicker. Um, retail have got their, you know, their fixed costs. So they can't, when rates go up, you know, they are very skittish because, um, you know, they don't want to be lending out, let's say it's seven and a half. And then two months later, rates are dropping at five and a half and they got a bunch of refi, you know, a bunch of early payoffs. So lenders get very skittish when rates, you know, head up higher. And there's just a lot of liquidity right now. And like I said, the wholesale lenders are seem to be reacting a lot quicker to any change in rates, um, you know, which is good for me, but um, you know, right now it's just hard to forecast where rates are. Cause if, you know, nobody really knows what the fed's going to do in terms of, you know, um, their neutrality and their rates. I mean, their, their real yields have been climbing. Um, you know, they, the feds have been there before as far as, you know, flattening out this volatility, but right now, you know, you've got um, their, you know, they have been buying, buying MBS. So that, you know, there's this market has been floating around very volatile on a day to day basis. So the market just don't know which way is up. And, um, you know, I think we're going to, this, this period is going to be here for a bit. I think we eventually will calm down. But I mean, right now, if um, like rates here, let me just pull you, pull my screen up again, Rick. I mean, I'm looking at rates right now. Um, this is 10% down, 400, about a $475,000 purchase. You know, you're looking at rates six and a half is a cost of uh, about $500. Six and five aces of credit of about eleven hundred dollars. So, um, you know, you're looking at mid mid sixes, high sixes right now. I'm sure there's some retail banks that are probably in the seven seven and a quarter range charging points because you know that their their rate their rate sheets can only go so far as far as supporting, um, you know what they what they charge. Well, let me so, ask you a question because somebody asked, you know, made the comment the other day. You know, it just seemed not too long ago that it was a good strategy for sellers to offer a credit to give buyers the opportunity to buy the rate down. But now that's incredibly expensive. Am I wrong? 
Yeah, it is. That's the problem. I mean, here, look at, um, pull that up again. Um, you know, you're, um, it, it's, it is gotten more relatively more expensive because, um, lenders are not, when you see a very volatile market, um, the bottom line is, okay, I simplify this. When you see a volatile market, lenders are not willing to give out money. Um, they're very tight with it. So it's going to be, you know, when you have a volatility swing like that, it's going to be, you know, the volatility premium is going to make it more expensive to buy down the rate. Because, okay. you know, if you think about it, when, when rates are, you know, steady, you know, lenders like, okay, well, 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 you know, if they're just moving around at a certain rate, yeah, this rate, we could buy it down here. They're, they're pretty much feel well assured that they're going to get, you know, because basically you're paying interest on, on the low, on the uh, ahead, ahead of time on the buy down. But when you got volatility, I mean, you look at right now, I mean, not long ago, we were talking about, remember back when we were talking a couple months ago, high five, you know, high fives, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to cost you 12, $14,000 to get, you know, to the high, you know, five and a half. Fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I saw yeah. we had an offer come in on a on a on a home, and they the amount of uh, closing cost credits that they were asking for, I thought it was all for a buy down, and they said no, it was just to cover the lending fees. And I, I was, yeah, I said, man, who are you using? <laughs> well, right now, right now, it, it, it's. I mean, the, the volatility has created a discrepancy amongst lenders. That is uh, very, I mean, I saw this back in 2019 between wholesale and retail where there's a big discrepancy. And I saw an article, you know, talking about, hey, it pays the shop for a loan now because of discrepancy in pricing and cost. I mean, look at back, look at this chart. Remember when people complained about high fours, right? Four, you know, four and three quarters. And with this lender plaza, it costs you $32,000 to get four and three quarters right now. Wow. I mean, so... We look, we had a gifted horse. I mean, this the four and a quarter. It, it was if I would have quoted, you know, last year four and a quarter, people would have thought we were nuts. Right now, four and a quarter costs you forty four thousand dollars. It's eleven, basically eleven points out of the market. So I mean, you know, okay. So if, let's say rates do come down, you know, a point. I mean, right now, if I look at this chart, you know, we're about three points away on the pricing for from five and five ace. Five and a half, basically. So that's three point three three hundred basis points. That's a lot. That's a lot that the uh, market's got to move to get down to five and a half. So I think right now we're going to be in this mid, you know, low sixes, mid sixes range for a while. Um, you know, I don't think you know if we get up to in the high sevens, eights. I don't know, but I mean, you just yeah, look at my yeah. pricing. You look at my pricing, like I said, just on this. So like I said, there's probably there's some lenders at seven, you know, seven a quarter. I'm mean, like I said, right now with this lender, I'm at six and a half with a cost of $500, which is, I think, relatively speaking, based on what, you know, the market's been, I think that's pretty, you know, relatively good speaking, you know, wise. But like you said, to get down to in the low fives, you're talking about seventeen, twenty two thousand dollars twenty five thousand $25,000 to get to run the low 5% range. And that's going to be a while before we get there. Well, I think the thing to stress too now for buyers is that, you know, I really want to encourage buyers spend some time looking for rates. I mean, I've had somebody ask me a question, where's the best place to look for a rate? Well, you can't just look for a rate. Don't, don't go online and click around and think you found a good spend. You're about to sign a, a con, you know, get a loan for, you know, half a million dollars, make it a priority to really give lenders time to shop that rate for you. In other words, you have to let go of that mindset that you're going to pick up the phone and say, Pat, what's your right and hang it up. And, and you're going to get, you know, six and a quarter. It's let them work with you when you're shopping for a lender and let them yeah. talk to you about what it is that you're looking for, what your yeah. debt to income ratio is, your credit score, but spend more time on that now than you probably would have in the past. So that you what can you make see? sure you're making a good move because the fees that are out there now are, are all over the place. And sometimes yeah, seen, you don't even know what that fee is until you get your closing documents. I'm seeing a rich, I'm seeing uh, you know discount points of two, two and a half points. I mean, I, you know, you're talking ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars. I mean, people get by just, you know, like I said, am I am I the lowest rate? Uh, you know, there's people out there's people who are lower than me, but I'm you know on a scale of one to ten, I, I'd say one being the lowest rates. Mine are probably two, two, you know, two and a quarter, you know, two and I mean 
two and a half. There's not going to be too many people that beat me or beat a bro. I mean, I'm not just saying myself, but a broker, right? Uh, per se, because like you said, retail right now is getting. I mean, I've seen this in my Facebook posts where their retail is getting hammered because their their um, their uh, their cost structure is higher. They've got you know they they've got regional managers, they got uh, local managers, they got branch managers they have to pay for. Where the wholesale is, you know, they've got. I can go to anybody. So it definitely with the volatility and the reason I'm saying is it. It does pay to shop maybe a little bit, um, you know, not, you know, four yeah. or five people. You don't, you're you not, when people, some people do shop, they try to get the, the lowest rate, the lowest cost. You're talking about a four or $500,000, um, you know, uh, purchase. I mean, you're going to vary by maybe a $500,000, $1,500. $1, but if you do shop, you might be able to save yourself five to ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, um, you know, off that initial, uh, you know, stage. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It takes time. It it's it's worth shopping for right now. So, ladies uh, in the market, there. You know, I showed you a chart that showed uh, a lot of back on market and a lot of homes falling out. Are you are you seeing that? I have one right here. I get to go show. <laughs> you get to I, go I, show it. <laughs> well, I took a call last night um, from one of our lead bases um, that we have through Century Twenty One, and. Uh, she said she's been watching it for a while and it's CCBS and what does that mean? And so I explained that process to her. Um, I told her that I'd give her a call back today. What was a good time? So I'm supposed to call her after two today after I pull up the information. So when I pulled it up this morning, it's active. So I'm going to go show her that property this afternoon. So pretty excited well, about that. Was, that. that was a contingency. Yeah. And they couldn't fulfill the contingency. So now the listing's active again. Right. That might yeah. be, that might explain some of the spike that we're seeing in that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're just, they're just coming back on the market. It's like a bad well, penny. And Rick, I, we actually have a listing that was CCBS and uh, we'd been, you know, we were past deadlines, but our seller really wanted the buyer to have the house. They were trying to sell a house in Florida and we had been CCBS for actually a few months and an agent called us, uh, what, two weeks ago, I think, Ruby? And, yeah, about that. Um, and this is a million dollar property in Cape Creek. Cape Creek, as you know, you know, Cape Creek's still considered a seller's market, not a strong seller's market, but it's still up there. <coughs> Paradise Valley, I believe, um, Cape Creek, Scottsdale, and I forgot the other one, but you know, we're still seeing a strong seller's market there. Anyways, this agent called and, uh, he said, you know, what's going on? I'm interested in the property. And um, yeah, so we actually gave a, we had a 24 hours for buyer number one to remove their contingencies and they couldn't do it. They're in their inspection period, but the market down there is very volatile right now and he didn't trust the buyer. So he walked away and we replaced it. So, and that that's a contract back on market and then under contract again. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to what you said though, real quick, Rick because I think there's a lot of consumers that have a misconception on shopping for a mortgage. So I think it's great yeah. that you brought that up. They, a lot of people assume I've had buyers tell me this over the years and you know, I explain it's not that way, but a lot of buyers assume that if they're shopping for a mortgage, it's like when they're shopping for a car and if they call all these different lenders, it's going to have an effect on their credit. And, you know, I always explain to people, no, you need to talk to the lender. There's so many different variables. You, you were a hundred percent correct. You can't pick up the phone and say, what's your rate today? Because there's so many variables for each individual. And, and to Pat's point too, you don't always necessarily want the cheapest. You want somebody that you're going to be able to reach. Who's going to work hard for you, who right. is going to be able to tackle the challenges. I mean, we get people all the time that'll say, Oh, you know, I went to Lone Depot or I went to Quicken or, and they're, they're never talking to the same person all the time. And those are the files that when we have, we got multi multiple offers, if there was a Quicken loan, we really analyze that closely. If there was a loan say with somebody like Pat, we'd take that over Quicken all day long because right. we know the lender's going to work one-on-one -on -one with the buyer. And there's a lot higher chance that file's going to be okay. Yeah, and it, but it, it's and that I'm glad you brought up the credit thing because there's a difference how the credit union looks at the, the credit bureaus look at you shopping for a mortgage versus shopping for a car loan. Absolutely, right. so, yeah, you, 
Yeah, and consumers window. don't understand that. And it's so yeah. super important. Well, a lot you probably of, hear that a lot, Pat. They go, I don't want you to pull my credit because I've already done it once. Yeah, right? oh yeah, all the, all the time. But I mean, you know, like you could pull a soft credit. I mean, I, I had this one lady last week who said, I'm going to do a soft credit pull, which it does not a hit, at least to give me an idea. But uh, places like Quicken, they like to, the game that they like to play is basically, you know, pull your credit because nine out of 10 people, real, they hear that and they're like, oh, I can't go anywhere else. Um, mm -hmm. That's what they do. Um, that's basically their game that they yeah. play. And they're like, hey, we pulled your credit. And I'm sure they've got a little spiel that say, hey, if you, know, if you call somebody else and they pull your credit, your credit could drop, you know, X amount right. of points, which it does not drop. Initially, it, it'll have an effect of about three to four points. But within a 30 to 40 day window, there's a, a credit uh, reporting of the new act or the new law says that, you know, you can't really, you could do it. You could do it three, four or five times within a 30 day period. It doesn't. You know, now, if you shop, I said five, six, seven. Yeah, it's going to. Something's eventually going to, you know, um, you know, it's it's going to have an effect. But, you know, a couple of times here and there, it's not. But I do a soft credit pull right now. Well, we're in a world where we just want to click the mouse and get the rate and move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we want to we want to click and find the house. And, you know, I even read an article today about um, online notaries. It's that bill's going through Congress to try and make to where you can notarize online. There's some pushback on it because there's still some technical hiccups and, uh, you know. Ruby's a mobile notary. Yeah. I mobile am. notary, but not not an online notary though, right? I do remote online signings as well. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's, it, it's, yeah, there's additional training that goes with it, but yeah, um, there's pushback on it because you have that person on the other side, you're still face-to-face -face through the computer and yeah. showing your ID and uh, whatnot. Yeah. I prefer to go in, in person though. Yeah. There's, there's situations where it really makes sense if you can do the online notary, but, but it, it shows you the drive to, to do everything on a computer as fast as you can. But even said that, um, you know, I've had to sign a few things uh, this past week and my, my phone, uh, you know, it's like, uh, just like Pat, it, it drops, you know, I just like, <laughs> he's, he's <gone. laughs> okay. So at the, uh, probably went to hit his mute mute button and uh, he disappeared. But oh, um, poor Pat. I've got. Uh, You're not getting the cold through the phone now, are you? No, no. Or no, through the I, computer? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, my, my connection is not as good as his phone. The I'm seeing um, still a lot of activity, a lot of inquiries out there. My website traffic is, is up. People are looking. They're not pulling the trigger, but their searches are way up. Yeah. Um, so people are, they're, they're on the sidelines, they're looking and they're waiting and the data shows it. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's going to be so interesting about this market is, you know, people be made comments. Well, I, I don't know when I'm going to be ready to go or what right. it is I'm looking for. And so, um, they, but you know, web traffic, when I see it, um, I've got more and more people that have been coming in and taking a look and I know what they're doing. They're like, okay. I, I think it's going to change. Let me check and see if it has. I think, right. yeah, people are watching the prices. They're watching to see what they're doing. And I just had a conversation with someone yesterday that literally told me how they thought that the prices were going to continue to just go down. That 20% that we talked about. And, um, yeah, I just kind of like smile. Well, but you know, there's, I, I mean, it that, that Prices right now have gone down 8% since the peak in May. Um, that's not alarming. That's from the yeah. peak. It hasn't gone down 8% versus last year. We're still up 7%. Right. So, right. Um, so we we have a long way to go to where we start seeing that magic 20% that everybody's talking about. And it's 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 a very real possibility it can happen. And it, it's also um, all depends on, I mean, just last week when you saw that England, you know, had to all of a sudden increase quantitative easing because their pension funds were about to go insolvent. And then mm -hmm. now I read, uh, Pat, that uh, the treasury market's not as liquid as it normally is. And the Fed might have to get involved in that because uh, yeah. they, they, they're just not, nobody's buying treasuries. China's backing off. Japan yeah. backed off. So that mm -hmm. market's not as liquid. So that kind of stuff can screw up a market quickly. Well, that, that's yeah. what I talked about earlier about the volatility. I mean, there's no, when they say no liquidity, just people are just, um, you know, you've got, 
when you've got right now you've got 20 you know somebody's selling a battery you got 20 batteries and you got 20 buyers that's a balanced market people are in and out now you got 20 batteries and one buyer so you know the, the batteries are fluctuating in price that's why that's why we're seeing the volatility i do think my my pretty i mean after i mean I'm not getting political. I'm just saying after after elections, I think if they do if we do see a change, I think we're going to see it ease up a little bit. I mean, that's just my you know. Re, I'm not Republican, Democrat. I'm not calling anything, but I think if, if we do see a change, because nothing right now the pressure has been on oil and, and inflation, and I think if they loosen up the regulations and get things things are moving along, I think we're going to see a change in November, December. Yeah, so, I think the, you know the, the the Treasury can't fix food and it can't fix oil. I mean, not, I mean, the Treasury can, but the central bank can't. Yep. So, yep. Um, yep. so they, they, something has to happen there to give us some relief and some reduce some pressure on rates. Otherwise, this inflation number is going to be out there for a long, long time. So, well, I want to thank everybody for showing up, and we will be back next week. And don't forget to smash that like button. Okay. All right. See you, See you guys. See you girls. Bye. 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 Bye.